What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another live recording of the Engadget Podcast. I'm Devendra Hardawar. I'm joined this morning with Sherlyn Lowe. Hey, Sherlyn. Hi. Oh, well, I like your background. We're all doing fancy backgrounds now. Our senior yeah. commerce editor, Valentina Palladino. Hey, Valentina. Hi, guys. Hey. And our podcast producer, Ben Elman. Hey, Ben. My background is a front round. I'm sorry about the glare. <laughs> It's all good. I mean, you're you're definitely um, a candidate for using a background yeah. image at this point. <laughs> we just have darkness. But good morning, everybody. Thank you all for joining us. Who's here in the chat room? Jonathan Tran, Declan Flynn, CF542. Hello, hello. Hello, Tech. Everyone. Hello, Tech. I'm curious what people think of, like, timing for us mm -hmm. to do this stream. I wonder, like, you know... So we've started at 11, we've started at 10. I wonder if people have a preference. I wouldn't mind somewhere in between myself, like a 10.30 would be good it for depends, me. It depends on guests and all sorts of stuff, but We yeah. also think it, yeah. yeah, it depends on guests, yeah, but true. also like, you know, Ben needs, we we're, we want to give Ben more time to cut the episode together mm -hmm, as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. So there's that. Hi to Jiming Chong, Kylo Hello. Tech. Oh, you said Kylo Tech already, right? Mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. Ruined We're going to be... We're going to be doing all sorts of stuff today. Um, <laughs> thank you all for joining us. Um, I did see, I feel like the title does not convey like the excitement of what we're going to be <laughs> having, but uh, I did see there weren't as many people waiting for this episode as usual. So thank you all for the loyal few that are sticking around, but we're going to be talking about our holiday gift guide stuff, which Valentina is, um, is kind of supervising and handling. So we've got a lot of cool ideas and things to talk about here, especially before Black Friday and everything. Yeah. Yep. CF542, I, I understand the confusion of the timings. It depends on a lot of things. I would say the best thing is keep an eye on our Twitter accounts in the morning and we will, you know, announce either if we're going live or if we'll be skipping the day. Yeah. Or I think if you're subscribed to the Engadget YouTube, they'll just yes, you, you will get an alert too. Yeah. Yeah, actually, yeah. If you're subscribed, you will get the alert of when the next live stream is going to be happening. So that helps you. When you log into uh, YouTube, you will see that, I believe. <clears throat> I'm having a hair moment. I'm like, okay. why is my, ugh, my bangs are too long again. So like they're all over the place. So y'all are going to see me fiddle with this just so you know. <laughs> I was going to comment on how Jim Cher is drinking muscle milk today. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's really important today for a lot of chat feedback because we're going to be talking about holiday gifts we're going to be talking about like who to get gifts for mm -hmm. and so we need mm -hmm. like use cases we need people to look for so are you looking for a young relative are you looking for your grandparents or someone in between give us some interesting possibilities and we'll try to put that into the show I like Sherlyn trying to fix her hair with the background filter. It just looks like yeah, <laughs> it looks all like you have invisible hands at this. Welcome point to the chillest episode of the. We're just chilling. Sometimes we have yeah. I have given up. <laughs> all right, if I think you we are. Dyed your get... hair a certain mm -hmm. color. Would you be able to like map a? Oh yeah, absolutely. Onto if you it? if you dye it like green screen green. You, you will never be invited green, to live broadcast the, anywhere. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god, I would look bald. That would be amazing. <laughs> that, would be, that would be a lot of fun. Although I'm pretty sure you could do a lot of that within video software now. Like you can basically oh, yeah. map your hair color and whatnot. I'll be um, right back, y'all. Okay. <laughs> Fades uh, into the you. background. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So okay, she's gonna so, get a green wig oh, and ruin yeah, everything. <clears throat> I was about to uh, try to do the sync, but no, we got to wait fine. for fine. sure to come back. Kylotech, uh, believe we're the same nationality? Hello, hello. There are a lot of Guyanese techies out there. That's how I find a lot of people, to be honest. Uh, fun fact, one of my best friends um, I met in college, like in our computer lab, and unbeknownst to us, like we were two people from the same random Caribbean nation in a super small college in Massachusetts, and that never happened. So I love the Guyanese people. We're everywhere. OK, we have one possible use case. We've got Jonathan Tran saying, my 70-year-old techie dad <laughs> who always returns my tech gifts because he wants a better version. Yeah. A better but also version? Don't buy the cheapest thing. Wait, OK, maybe. but mm -hmm. also loves karaoke. <clears throat> I think that Sherlyn is going to be able to help. I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> there are that no seems like 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 smart <laughs> karaoke machines, but uh, we'll talk about that. There's Let's not talk a about lot that. of great, yeah, there's not a lot of great, it depends. We, we'll talk We'll talk about karaoke on the show. Yeah, we can definitely, I feel like that tech is stuck in the video CD era from the 90s, like <laughs> yeah. the, the old boxes. VCD. VCD. Um, okay, I think we're good to go. Let's get started. Yeah. 
Okay, so uh, counting down, let's count down from three. Chat, if you want to clap the same time that we all clap, it just helps me figure out where the files start, but it's become a tradition. So, mm -hmm. three, two, one, and some silence. I'll let you know when the silence is over. Okay, silence over. Let's cool. get on with the show. <laughs> While Sherlyn wrestles with her hair, it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think we're good to go. Uh, stand by, folks. We will be taking your comments during the show. Sometimes Ben will shout them out, and we will do a Q&A once we're done with the first section to ask Valentina questions, okay? Let's go in three, two, one. What's up, Internet? And welcome back to the Engadget Podcast. I'm Senior Editor Devendra Hardawar. I'm Deputy Editor Sherlyn Lowe. You sound unsure of that. But hey, yes. what? I was like, review? No! No! <laughs> um, hello, folks. Thank you for joining us. This is our very special episode where we talk about our holiday gift guides happening over at Engadget.com. Um, well timed, because we are a week before Black Friday. I feel like people are starting to think about uh, Christmas gifts in earnest now. So we'll be diving into some of that uh, with our senior commerce editor. We've got some news to talk about and um, you know, what else is going on? I've got some gadgets to talk about. It's always a fun time. Okay. <clears throat> We've got some news going on and some gadgets to dive into as well. As mm -hmm. always, folks, if you're enjoying the show, please be sure to subscribe to us on iTunes or your podcatcher of choice. Leave us a review on iTunes. Drop us an email at podcast at engadget.com if you got any questions or concerns. We also typically do a live stream Thursdays around 10 a.m. Eastern on our YouTube channel. Join us for that. It's a fun time. We've got a good crowd. Sometimes we show off gadgets and we usually have time for Q&A and it's a ton of fun. <clears throat> so we've got a lot of holiday gift guides going on at Engadget and joining us to talk about all this is Senior Commerce Editor Valentina Palladino. What's up, Valentina? Hi, guys. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. Uh, hi, hi. I know. Hello. Thank you for joining us. I know you're super busy because you're in the middle of uh, crazy times, right? Yes. Yes. This is the busiest time of year for honestly, like anybody who covers gadgets, you know, you guys have been very busy too. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, one week before Thanksgiving and just kind of deals and sales all over the place. But also, like you said, Deb, our, our holiday gift guide is uh, in full swing. Yeah. Well, and that, yeah. The there's a good question already right off the bat in our, our chat on the YouTube mm -hmm. live stream. CFI42 says, I'd like to know what your take on Black Friday is. Do you think there will be lots of good deals or just meh? Like, what's the outlook for this year? Because you're already knee deep looking through some of the deals, right? Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I think we're already starting to see some pretty good deals, even just this morning, uh, like when we're recording this. Um, there have been a ton of good deals going up already. Um, I mean, it is officially one week before Thanksgiving here in the U.S. So um, that's uh, that's kind of a, like a dog whistle there. But I mean, we've seen over the past couple of years, sales and deals going live even earlier than Black Friday. I mean, this is nothing yeah. new. Um, I mean, pretty much once, Hall once um, Halloween ends, excuse me, that's when people really like merchants and retailers really start going heavy on the deals. Um, so yeah, I think we're going to see some pretty good deals on Black Friday. We're already starting to see some mm -hmm. good deals. So I think it's, I think now, at like, like a couple of years, like the past two ish years, I'd say, good time to start buying things early. If you see a good deal, um, that's something that fits within your budget. Um, you know, I always recommend shopping early when you do see a good mm -hmm. deal. But mm -hmm. there are always surprises on Black Friday, always surprises <laughs> on Cyber Monday. It's yeah. uh, it's it's like I do feel like Black Friday has expanded itself from being kind of the one shopping day. Then it moved over to Cyber Monday. We were just making up all these things, but now everybody's doing like pre Black Friday sales too, which are basically yeah. the same deal and just as good. So, right? mm -hmm. so yeah. So Jonathan Tran in the chat again also says, "Has Black Friday just been Black November?" Yeah, which, basically. Like, I, it That's feels very true. Like it. Kyle yeah, Tech I would... that like. Yeah, mm -hmm. sorry. Go ahead. Oh no. I would say that's 100% true. I mean, Black November, I guess, if you want to call it that. I mean, just deals and sales November. Um, it's it's the entire month, essentially, now. I, yeah, and I would point out that 11-11 is actually a bigger deal in mm. Asia than mm -hmm. it is oh, wow. here. But it's a huge like day of sales, too. In China, mm -hmm. it's called Singles Day. Um, it yes, started a few yes. years ago. Yeah, and that's a huge like Alibaba and yeah. uh, Taobao and all of those Chinese. Yeah, based wasn't that basically holidays. Alibaba's created holiday? Just like, yes, let's, they created let's make a, a holiday. Exactly. Interesting. Like I didn't 11. know that. And, uh, yeah, and so because of that, I I personally bought a bunch of stuff using eleven mm. eleven deals, and it's actually spread out to like more Western brands too. Mm. 
so so to that point yeah absolutely it feels like black november right like sure. it's more than, and then the, i throw in what davinger mm-hmm. was saying about the pre-black friday deals like early access i'm like do I want to buy these Black Friday deals? Not like now. So now you're saying Valentine. Now is an okay time to buy, right? I don't have to wait till Black Friday to spend my money. Yeah, I would say now is a pretty decent time to buy. I would even say like the longer you can wait, the longer you feel like you can wait getting closer to Black Friday, mm-hmm. the more likelihood you are where you'll kind of see those surprise deals. You know, the kind of things that are maybe one day only on Black Friday or maybe go Black Friday into Cyber Monday. Um, Cause mm-hmm. there are always some of those deals, right? Like there's always certain things that are set, like retailers will, sit, will save for the day of. Um, but I think the majority of things are starting to go on sale now. Mm-hmm. Certainly. Certainly next week, like the week of Thanksgiving in the U.S., I mean, a lot of things are just going to be are probably going to be on sale, like starting early next week through Cyber Monday. That's just a trend that we've been seeing for the past couple of years. Gotcha. Before we dive too deep into the stuff, I want to talk about our holiday gift guide because we have (laughs) a whole bunch of guides out there written by um, a bunch of folks on staff, including you, Valentina. So. You know, we do a bunch of things in Gadget, and I don't think people quite realize like the extent of what it is. We do our coverage, we do our reporting, we do reviews, we do this podcast, and we also do a lot of like service journalism in the form of these guides. And honestly, I love having time to take a step back and be like, okay, what are the ones I would actually recommend mm-hmm. to people? So I did the computer and tablet guide, the laptop and tablet guide. Um, we've got a bunch of things out there. Uh, can you give us like the, the broad overview of what's going on this year, Valentina, and what sorts of guides people can find? Sure. Yeah. So our holiday gift guide this year, I believe we have over 25 individual stories. So 25 individual guides all under our kind of holiday gift guide umbrella. Um, And yeah, like you said, Deb, we cover, I think, kind of all the bases and more. Um, Mm -hmm. Certainly all of the kind of standard gadgety things that you could think of, like laptops, tablets, uh, streaming devices, home entertainment, uh, things like TVs, um, even uh, stuff for gamers and game streamers. Um, there, there are gifts, gift ideas for all of the kind of traditional um, or just what we think of as Engadget fans, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and just the more tech savvy among us. Um, but we also have a lot of gift guides this year for just kind of our like interests on staff right yeah, um so we yeah. have a whole guide to for home cooks in your life so people who like to spend time in the kitchen like to cook all the time um we also have a um a board game roundup that we've actually done for the past couple of years um which is one of my favorites because you know we don't cover board games necessarily all the time on Engadget, but we do have people on staff who are really into board games and there are a lot of really interesting recommendations in there that um you know i certainly wasn't aware of like half of the half of the board games in um, our guide this year <laughs> i didn't even know existed and i really want to pick them up because i am kind of a homebody and i would like to get into more interesting board games you know not your standard stuff mm-hmm. um and then we also have our we have a new ga- a new guide all to um gifts for people who love space so nasa anything space mm-hmm. related lots of fun um ideas in there um and i think kind of off the wall sort of ideas there's some clothing there's some shoes um even jewelry and like these really cool uh, one of my favorite things in all the gift guides it's uh these bookends that are like kind of like have little astronauts and like the moon oh. on either side they're they're so cute <laughs> I, i'm not a huge space nerd but like i i kind of want them for myself <laughs> um <laughs> and yeah uh, we also have things like our tech toys for kids so if you have kids or if you have nieces nephews or just younger children in your life like there's a bunch of techie things in there um that are not like your traditional just like give them a tablet and be done with it you know what i mean like the fun things that are also interactive that adults can get involved with um and then you know budget friendly guides as well we have an under 50 um tech gift guide in there and we will have because we still have some guides that haven't even come out yet uh, we will have like a kind of roundup of everything in our gift guides, all the stories um, mm-hmm. that's under $100. So that's uh, really good if you're sticking to a strict budget this year. Gotcha. gotcha. I'd, like to, I'd like to shout out mine that's not up yet, I don't believe. Uh, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> yeah. Wow, okay. My, my Obviously mine. Uh, it's going to be the gift guide for fitness lovers, which very in line with like my thing this year. Um, mm-hmm. So I, and Valentina notices <clears throat> that in the edit process, I tried to squeeze too many products and I was like, one whole paragraph <laughs> on everything I want you all to know that I know about and that I couldn't really like, you know, write into it. So like, there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff that y'all don't mm-hmm. see. Um, but that doesn't mean like I uh, like we don't that we aren't aware of the mm-hmm. ton of stuff that's out there that we didn't include on our list. We are. It's just yeah. That, like, 
you know, we, the ones that we do end up recommending are the ones we've tried, we've tested, we have real experience with, and we can recommend. And then the other stuff that like might have like been mentioned that we ended up cutting is the stuff that like, you know, maybe we don't think is as good to buy for everyone or like as big of a group of people. And, you know, maybe slightly outside of our core expertise as like tech reviewers, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. in this case, you know, we had to leave it out so yeah and um, i and i will say that we have in across all of the gift guides i believe there's there's over 250 recommendations like individual product recommendations so there's a ton of stuff in there and like you said share almost all of it is just stuff that we've had firsthand experience mm -hmm. with things that we've reviewed very highly things or that we've gone ourselves. yeah gone hands-on with the things that we bought ourselves that's a big big part portion of this mm -hmm. um so yeah there's a ton of recommendations in there already so yeah, we had to do some editing. You know, we are in the business of editing a little bit, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Gotcha. It's worth uh, bringing up like some general ideas. I feel like every year when we do this, because we've talked about archive guides for a couple of years now, Maybe not everybody are as seasoned deal hunters as some of us on staff, because I used to live for deals in sites like bensbargains.net and Slick Deals, and I still do when I'm looking for things. I feel like Slick Deals is still a good source for a lot of things. So check out mm -hmm. our guides, but also for, for general usage folks, like, do you have any tips, Valentina, if like you have a specific product you want to find, you're waiting for it to like get to a good price, do you set up search alerts? What, do you, what are your tactics? Because for me, it's mm -hmm. always a Slick Deal search, and I will usually get an email or sometimes a ping from their app when like a store has it for a certain price you know yeah no i think all of those all of those recommendations are really good ones i'm a very um hands-on like manual type of person so <laughs> i will just, just sit like, there and refresh. i just searches yeah like i just search you know every single day to see what's mm -hmm. new um for the things that i personally want but also you know for for engadget to make sure that we're covering all the latest mm -hmm. deals all the time um but yeah i would say you know going on a site like slick deals is a good idea i'm um, setting up alerts uh, more looking at <clears throat> excuse me Price history kind of trackers like Camel, Camel, Camel. That's a good resource. Oh, yeah. Just so you can kind yeah. of see if something is actually a good deal. Um, mm -hmm. And I mean, around this time of the year, usually the sales that you're going to see are either all time low prices or very close to them. I think with inflation, you there's a chance that you might see things not go down as dramatically as they have in the mm -hmm. past, maybe last Black Friday, but the deals are still going to be the best deals that you could find throughout the year, honestly. Um, so yeah, I would say just keep use a price history tracker if you have something very specific that you want to get and you just want to get the best deal on it and you're willing to wait until it drops. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, sites like Slick Deals are a good one. Um, we cover as many de deals as possible in the tech space as we can at Engadget. So always check back um, on Engadget.com for um, our coverage. We also have our deals Twitter account, which we will share out all of our deal stories. And we have a newsletter too. Our deals newsletter um, oh, yeah. will deliver like some of the top <laughs> ones that we find directly to your mm -hmm. inbox too. So I Mm -hmm. I'm so curious because you say you're such a manual person, Valentine. Do you have like your own personal spreadsheet where you're like tracking every product's <laughs> prices and like whenever there's a new all time low, you're like, yes, update. Like, in the <laughs> not exactly. I'm not, I haven't gone that. Yeah. far down the rabbit hole yet um because i feel like that's like just what i would be doing all the time like i wouldn't have time for any anything else during the day um but i have something similar to what you're talking about just so, especially for like our coverage and gadgets just so yeah. i know kind of what should we be focusing on and the kind of the the products certainly that we like and that we've rated highly um mm -hmm. that we've used personally what should i be looking out for number one um and then also mm -hmm. like after for for my job especially like once you've seen these things go on sale so many times you can kind of immediately recognize when something is a really good deal and when it's not um you mm -hmm. kind of get right. familiar with the prices so that's a whether it's a pro or a con i kind of just have like this this <laughs> bank of price you knowledge <laughs> you have yeah. yeah you're an instant like deal machine at this point i mean yeah. <laughs> in other words you're the expert that's why i go to like valentina because people ask mm -hmm. me right for like right. shopping advice this all this so a lot of people are like looking for apple products someone wants to know when they can get an iphone an ipad mm -hmm. and so like valentina can attest to this i've been texting her this past few weeks like hey so yeah. where can my neighbor get the like best deals on the ipad this year and she's like oh you know your first bet is this place in that place mm -hmm. and then yeah. another one uh, another one of my neighbors was looking for a new iphone so they're going with a mm -hmm. carrier because their mm -hmm. carrier is doing some sort of like free deal but yeah um, mm -hmm. i see also in the chat that like um jonathan tran asked is camel 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 better than honey and i in my understanding mm -hmm. and i think davindra you, you had an answer but i don't know if it's, if it's the same thing we're talking about yeah my, to my understanding camel 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 is like a price tracker and it's a search a engine type applied. deal yeah yeah it, honey applies coupons right honey so applies coupons i think it, it may also do like price comparisons but what i don't like about honey that is an extension right so those right, things it's a browser that kinda, extension so it knows the everything. things that live in your browser um 
they're definitely tracking a lot of information from you and some mm -hmm. people are cool with it if you're For saving sure. money or not i just i just need a price tracking search engine that's all i want so mm -hmm. that's why yeah. camel's better for me yeah yeah, gotcha. So, and speaking mm -hmm. of that, by the way, this is something that I saw yesterday that was under embargo until this morning that <laughs> I wanted to sort of talk about in other news, but is relevant now. So we might as well talk about it now. So Google this morning, um, as of this morning of this recording, announced that they're updating some of their, you know, shopping uh, interface. So mm -hmm. in addition to seeing just like, you know, stores that have the products that you want and, and how much they cost, they'll also show you things like how they compare within a ah. chart to other places that sell the same product. That's good. And, nice. um, right. And you know how, like when you search for like, uh, flights and stuff, they have the, uh, historical, like, oh, prices are typically this much for your flight. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, they'll have, they'll bring that same sort of legend to shopping results now. So mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. is rolling out, uh, on either today or Monday. So hopefully mm -hmm. in time for the shopping season, you'll see uh, more helpful Google search results when you're shopping. Oh man, that uh, shop interface has been yeah. so bad for so long. So, okay, make, make it more useful. It's been That's, a mess. It's been a huge mess. I do wanna point out like this is a weird year where uh, mm -hmm. some devices have actually gotten more expensive compared to last year. So we've mm -hmm. written about the Oculus Quest 2, which was one of our recommended VR headsets last year, got more expensive this year, the PS5, um, Sony has raised prices in many countries, I believe not in the US, but you know, it's rough out there because of yeah. uh, the people preparing for an oncoming like financial crisis. So it is tough. Uh, take what deals you can. Um, I do feel like, um, you know, Valentina, are there any specific things you kind of want to mention as we're wrapping this up? Like, um, we have some questions from our listeners, mm -hmm. but anything you want to mention about the guides or like, what, what are some of your favorite gadgets that we've talked about so far mm -hmm. or recommended in the guides? Um, well, I always I always like to mention kind of our budget friendly guides just because, you know, the tech space, like you said, Dev, it's, mm -hmm. it's getting more expensive, especially for the brand new products. Um, but you don't have to to kind of spend an arm and a leg to get a good tech gift, you know, whether it is for someone who is very tech savvy or someone who, you know, isn't as tech savvy, like you can find something that's pretty useful and fun um, for people, but it be under $50 or $100 or $100. Um, in our under 50 guide, I think we have a bunch of great recommendations. One of them that, I mean, it has been kind of a mainstay in this guide for a while is the Chromecast Google TV. I think that's mm -hmm. a fantastic gift, mm -hmm. um, including now that they have two options right like we always love we love the 4k model um and it's uh usually 50 dollars. i'm pretty sure it can it can we've seen it drop to 40. i think it actually might be on sale right now for 40 dollars in some places um but now they have the hd chromecast mm -hmm. with google tv so if you're willing if you want to spend even less <laughs> um you can get that for i think it's it goes for 30. um or so or if, i think that that's a fantastic gift yeah you or know? the tv that the person you're buying for isn't so good you know mm -hmm. you can yeah. save some money yeah <laughs> <laughs> or the, or if they yeah. are like if they use a lot of google devices or maybe they have um mm -hmm. one of the google smart um displays or they use the assistant a lot you know this uh, the go the chromecast is compatible with um, google assistant so um it can fit into a lot of people's lifestyles whether they are heavy google or not um there's also some you know really handy kind of smaller power banks you can get for under 50 dollars. anchor makes some great ones um you can just kind of throw in your bag throw in your backpack and you have like at least half of like a phone battery charge like for, for you sure. um Super great. that those i think are always really good stocking mm -hmm. stuffers um there's also things it's good like to buy PS from a trust i just want to point out it's good to buy yeah. from a trusted brand like anchor as a gift because there's so much garbage out there there are bad mm -hmm. batteries Especially and accessories and bad lithium-ion batteries are dangerous mm -hmm. they can catch yeah. fire they can explode and those fires are hard to deal with so good brands or like they just anchor. don't work yeah 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 anchor is one of our favorites they make a lot of really great battery and like charging accessories i had like two-ish questions for Valentina sure. and I'll blast through them really quick. One, are there any like big inventory concerns this year? Not that I have heard of. Mm. You know, I haven't heard of anything like we did kind of either last year or even the year before where like stock was like a right. super big issue. Um, and also this kind of, I think this whole thing started with like early Black Friday stuff, like super mm -hmm. early, even going into October when the inventory issues were a thing and people wanted to push the kind of shopping forward so that people could get their gifts on time. Um, I still think that is a, a good tactic. Like if you know what you want and you see it go on sale for a price that you're willing to pay, buy early, you know, yep. check often, buy early if you can. <laughs> Um, but I have not heard of any like significant supply issues, like supply chain issues. So hopefully that, that isn't as much of a concern this year to ha as it has been in the past. Yeah. 
my last thing is just two general tips one is that like i find digital subscription type gifts such great last minute gifts oh great yeah when like yeah. you're you've forgotten someone on your list oh my lord buy them like a subscription to something or like a uh, I mean, gift cards are always great, but like you don't. Or you know, any like, digital yeah, type of gift, like an ebook or exactly. a movie or something. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, I know mm -hmm. the vendor sent me a digital gift before I knew that was a last I, minute gift. I sent gift. you one, and uh, uh, yeah. no, because I wanted you to watch something, and you never actually did I know, watch you it. Did. So we will. <laughs> I, I we ended will. up watching it for free, unfortunately. Uh, and then the other. <laughs> The other general tip is just for life, uh, you know, pay attention to when your packages are arriving because mm -hmm. I, yeah. my building has been the victim of package theft recently. So you know, just keep it. You an know eye what's out. great for that? Um, I, I, I'm not for this app, but the shop app, it's just called shop. Yes. Uh, it does yes. a great job. Uh, you could tie your Amazon account to it and also like we'll track other things that you put into it. Like you can put in your email so it can track like you know things you're getting that is a okay. good way because i also always have a lot of packages coming in so it's a good thing to keep you alert of like when a package is delayed yeah. or when it's been delivered or something so mm -hmm. i've been track guilty of, of leaving mm -hmm. packages to wait in you know the oh mail room you can or for too long i <laughs> you can, can yeah shut shut it devendra <laughs> but then like you know now i'm like no if you're like me and you tend to be a bit tardy with picking up packages just don't this holiday season because it's uh, like package stuff is at an all-time high mm -hmm, everyone's mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. the thieves in some the buildings lookout, there so. may not be much room to handle boxes and stuff and uh Either. maybe and also, maybe it's really unfair to the people yeah. in your building to, to just was, leave junk there yes for months i was also gonna <laughs> shout out i was gonna shout out that also be kind to the uh postal workers and people oh, yeah. handling packages Definitely. this please, season please. it's an influx of them so just be be understanding that maybe you're impatient for your package but they're mm -hmm. dealing with a lot of traffic right now. absolutely so that'll be mm -hmm. i had a couple quick to. tips that i like to bring up every time mm, when yes. we're talking about gifts um be aware of privacy concerns. Not everybody may want an Alexa. Not everybody may want a device with a microphone. So if, if you have friends who are concerned about those things in general, like maybe don't give some of those things if you are not mm -hmm. comfortable with it or if they're not comfortable with it. And echo also, speaker, yeah. Okay. Echo speaker. Mm -hmm. um, be aware of the ecosystems your friends are using. Mm -hmm. Sending them Google stuff when they're all on iOS may not always be the best like try mm -hmm. it's unfortunate like this is the state we're in but if you know people and you're buying gifts for people in your life like you probably know what kind of phone they have or what what they use with their tv or something like that so try mm -hmm. to fit things into their ecosystems to make their lives a little more easy you know a little little less annoying and having to juggle separate apps and whatnot we've got some questions from people um on let me see here. We've got some questions from people in the chat that I want to bring mm -hmm. up real quick. Uh, Jonathan Tran asked early <laughs> on, um, what are some good gifts for his dad in his 70s who's a techie and loves karaoke? Hmm. Share. That seems That's, like it's up your alley. Charlene question. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I, as a karaoke expert slash aficionado slash mm. whatever you want to call it, I don't believe that you can get a real like at-home karaoke system that will replicate that experience of singing yeah. for other people right it depends on what you enjoy karaoke for and if you're the sort of person that wants to have it at home you're probably like enjoying the solo setup so you like maybe more the sound of your voice mm -hmm. in that case what you really are looking for is a good like recording setup mm. so that you can play it back afterwards that's what i do as an aspiring singer it's like <laughs> oh i want a good mic a good like um sound mm -hmm. booth type of situation um good headphones to play stuff back on but if you're looking for that like I'm going to get a bunch of people in a room and sing like loudly and crazy. That's hard to replicate at home. I do have there, a friend I'm, who has a yeah. great karaoke system at home. Mm -hmm. and we go hang out at her place all the time. Mm -hmm. That's fun. Yeah. I mean, it's expensive. Um, and I feel like that tech um, has not really advanced much. Like you would think because, mm -hmm. um, hey, we've got smart devices. We've got, you know, we've got all sorts of things. There is a Sing app, right? Which is a thing that yep. exists and it works on Apple TV. And that is kind of the way there are some and games TV, around. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. there are some games around that too, but those don't work very well because there's a bit of a delay. It's not the sort of like instant response of you singing into something. And you, even if you have a home theater system, you can't just like plug your voice into your home theater yeah. because it's Finding a whole the thing. Finding the tracks is another challenge, mm -hmm. yeah. The tracks yeah. are annoying, but also um, home theater speakers are not meant for broadcasting Mixing. voices from yeah, microphones. Exactly. Like it is a right. whole thing. So you still need a separate system for that like that's why it's annoying yeah. just you know go, go to so, karaoke place yeah. it looks like jonathan tran has settled on an idea jonathan tran is saying in the chat right now that mm -hmm. maybe i should get him a disco ball i think that's a great idea that's fun if that's that's yeah, fun, that's fun. Uh -huh. it adds to the atmosphere i know some karaoke rooms in asia have things like tambourines and like little props that you can like just toss around some of their systems have built in woo noises like woo 
or a ranking <laughs> system that's also fun. Uh, but yeah, no, those are those those are some ideas for Jonathan. I know there's another uh, question. Mm -hmm. CF542 asks, I'd like to get a Pixel watch because I'm a tech junkie, but I will not pay anywhere near full retail. Are there any good deals on this? Valentina, I feel like that's a question for you. Mm. Are there good deals on the Pixel watch and Let's where? Let's see. Um, so far, I have not it's seen so any. Yeah. yeah, it's so new that I haven't seen anything um, recently. Um, but I think we have a story on the site that goes over that just went up this morning about mm -hmm. some Google deals that um, went live today. Um, so check there to see if there's any good discounts on the on the Pixel Watch. I'm just opening it up now to see if there yeah. actually yeah. is any. I, um, but yeah, it's so yeah. new. I would I would make sure that you set your expectations properly. Mm -hmm. Like I, I don't I wouldn't expect something as new as the Pixel Watch to be you know. I don't know, half off or more than half off or something. Right. Um, so yeah, especially with newer products, expect the discounts to be on the lower side, but it's still probably one of the first discounts you're going to see on, on, a, on a new product like that, you know? Mm -hmm. And Mark rightly points out that the yeah, deals on the Pixel Watch uh, happened. To, that's what uh, Valentina was talking about, how there were some Google deals that went up today. So yeah, definitely check in Gadget.com. We have the information there. Mm -hmm. um, but I also wouldn't be surprised if not only Google's <clears throat> own store, but carriers themselves might have deals come Black Friday as well. Mm -hmm. For sure. I see another question from uh, Jenny Gaming in the chat too, asking when are the new MacBook Pros going to be released? And honestly, the release cycles are some things you should probably be thinking about in terms of gifts and stuff we we have no clue like right now we are sitting and waiting <laughs> but apple did just have like they had their normal events and i do feel like the rumors are pointing to maybe early next year for macbook pro mm -hmm. like maybe post ces early spring type of deals uh the machines out there right now like i still think the m1 what the pro and the max whatever the, those chips, I'm losing track of the chip names, but mm -hmm. those are still really good machines. And, um, you know, the M2 chips that are out there, the M2 computers are still pretty powerful. Like that MacBook Air M2 is still plenty good. So if you want a MacBook Pro with the newer chips, you'll have to wait just a bit. Uh, I mean, I don't. I, I think that's all the questions we're going to address on the mm -hmm. audio episode. I want to quickly shout out a tidbit that I heard from uh, Google yesterday at its holiday event that it turns out apparently people are generally shopping for about only like seven people on their mm -hmm. list. And like when you said that mm -hmm. you want to, you know, get the vendor, you said you, you should get to know your people that you're buying for, get to know their like systems and their ecosystems yeah. a bit better. Yeah. So when, when Google told me this statistic, I was like, what? Seven <laughs> people only? <laughs> Really? Maybe you're buying too many I, gifts. Or I'm like. buying too many gifts. I gotta stop. Mm -hmm, <laughs> and, uh, mm -hmm. and then they were like, oh yeah, the next tier up is 20. Like a lot of people also mm. buy. <laughs> I was like, wait, only? <laughs> I was like, wait, wait, I need to like whittle Maybe. down this list. Maybe scale it back. <laughs> Mine. You've got too many to not... <laughs> hangers on that you need gifts this, from you. This, this is why I don't have money. I'm busy shopping for too many people. Mm -hmm. This is a problem. Mm -hmm. That's definitely um, a problem. But yeah, for the mm -hmm. 7 to 20 people on your list, I hope we've been able to help you figure it out. Also, make sure you're one of them. Make sure you're on your list yeah buy your treat yourself valentina yes. thank you so much for joining us where can people find you on the internet these days well i do have a twitter um but i have i have not logged into twitter for You're a quiet little bit of time twitter. yes i'm qu yeah. quiet quitting twitter um but i on, on twitter i am at valentina lucia if you'd like to find me there um otherwise i mean you can follow engadget and gadget deals on twitter um make sure that you go back to the, the engadget homepage to see all of our uh deals coverage for black friday we're going to be covering it in earnest you know we already are you know with all of the early mm -hmm. deals um but we will have full coverage for black friday if you're interested in um tech deals that you can get then as well as cyber monday too um and yeah follow engadget deals on twitter and also sign up for our newsletter if you want to receive that uh that information directly to your inbox so cool thank you very much thanks yeah. Matt. thanks Let's guys this was fun <laughs> we could take a break here for q a uh, just yep. for a bit uh, i'm gonna run to the bathroom so you guys chat yeah. with the crowd be right back uh cf542 goes am i on anyone's list here hey 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 you're on our list for sure our list of favorite people who tunes in uh <laughs> I'll, I'll also i'll also just bring up i think it was the same question asked uh, the same person asked the question about the pixel watch yeah. um i just checked our site uh the, our article and it's 50 dollars off right now at amazon so yeah. that's uh i think probably the best deal so far that we've seen because it's so new um i don't know if it would go lower than that honestly um yeah. but yeah that's a pretty decent pretty decent discount the the same person that asked the question is indeed five cf 542 and they say t-mobile had pixel watch for half off at launch but that ah, yeah 
yeah. so that was probably the biggest discount you would probably get get um the pixel yeah and carriers yeah. carriers often have kind of Very really big. good deals or discounts on phones but also accessories yeah. like that like smart watches and stuff um that you're not going to find at like a traditional retailer the, it's just because like if you're signing up for their cellular plans like they're going to exactly. give you something for free or something half off and you know that sort of thing they have so. more incentive to give it yeah through. yeah yeah so two um, things from me one um want to shout out mark dell for making a very pokemon npc comment i love to buy gifts for others so much fun to surprise uh people with fun things yes that's definitely <laughs> true it's a it and it's a fun sentiment but it also just reminds me of the shorts kid from pokemon who's like they're comfortable and easy to wear i love shorts <laughs> uh and the second thing is more substantive um we were talking about inventory and such uh kylotech made a comment during the segment uh talking about how like cnbc a lot of other like news outlets that cover uh economic stuff has talked about lots of retailers having excess inventory has that applied to tech or is that mostly like home goods like lawn furniture or whatever else i mean i personally cannot say for certain if it applies to tech or not. Um, I think that it certainly applies to some other categories, like you said, home goods, um, maybe even, I don't want to say furniture, but maybe like smaller things, you know, small household items. Um, so I, I, my quick answer is that I'm not sure, honestly. I don't know if there's going to be an excess of inventory for tech stuff. Um, but, you know, I certainly don't think that you're going to find things like going out of stock, let's say, uh an, an hour or two after they go on sale maybe for very new or like super hot items um but yeah i mean in in past years we have absolutely seen that i mean i remember what was it it was either last year or the year before when airpods i mean they would go on sale and then they would go out of stock three hours later i don't think you're really going to see that as much this year um so while i can't say if there's an excess of like airpods or you know headphones or anything that you might want to buy um i don't think we're going to have you're going to have ha as much of a problem getting them um um, but still, I mean, I'm always the, I've been like, I, I'm personally an early shopper. I like to get things as early as possible because I don't want to have to worry about it on, you know, December 24th or something. So I'm always of the mind of trying to shop as early as possible, but also like making sure I can get as good of a deal as possible. You know, there are certain things I'm willing to wait for and certain things that I'm not, you know. I uh, wanted to shout out a couple people on the chat. One, Springle says that they so, they're sorry they didn't see we're live before, and that you try to jump on as soon as we go live, and that this is your favorite podcast. Oh my gosh! This oh, is too thank sweet. you. We love it. Thank we don't you. see you in the chat very often, but we love our quiet viewers as much as the chat viewers. <laughs> sorry I that we don't get to. Out... Yeah, go, go, go ahead. ahead. No, go ahead. I also wanted to shout out Danny Leong, who was like, hey, thanks for always posting the good deals and that they love us. Thank you, Valentina. Oh, my God. So much hard work. So glad Into that your... you guys find it useful. Really. <laughs> always, I'm thrilled always. to hear that. I love pointing oh. people to the guys when they ask me for anything. Basically, it's yeah, like, hey, I, I cannot just give you recommendations for everything. Look, look at this guy. It's great. <laughs> okay, so Valentina, uh, why just ask the question that I was about to ask? And they <laughs> asked it in a much funnier way. How about them PS5s? <laughs> We were just talking about oh, gosh. inventory and stuff. <laughs> How about them PS5s? I uh, again, I I am not a PS5 um kind of like guru crystal ball kind of predict the future person um but i mean there there's a i would say there's a chance you see some deals on bundles maybe just because mm -hmm. i feel like with consoles it's really difficult especially with like the ps5 and the xbox series x like it's kind of difficult to find like actual deals on them um although i will say that uh i think it was either this morning or there might be some coming up oh no there was um there was a deal on the xbox series s that we covered mm -hmm. recently yeah. um, where it yep. was 50 dollars off um, that, I've seen way more very deals. Good, that thing is a great deal for young kids like anybody with young kids who may want both like a media device and something that could play a few games you know the apple tv can play some games but those games suck so if you want <laughs> something a little maybe more robust the series s is a great system yeah yeah and, I, and i've seen way more deals on the s just mm -hmm. since it has come out like over time mm -hmm. um and I, I think the the 250 um price i believe it was at adorama might 
still be um, Mm -hmm. uh, available. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I would say that is the one that I see more often actually on sale, but for the kind of like really flagship (laughs) consoles, it's really hard to find them for any less than like their standard price. But usually around this time, you can get some sort of bundle where it's a decent deal, either with like Mm -hmm. a controller or a really popular game, um, something like that. And, And you will usually find those types of kind of bundle sale sort of things everywhere so you're thinking target walmart amazon best buy like every retailer kind of has something usually that they want to try to sell you when it comes to consoles but generally it's really hard to find uh discounts on those um as far as stock goes it, it's always been hard to get a ps5 <laughs> um so i feel and like it's uh crazy? it's probably going to continue to be it's hard their PS5 you know? came out yeah they're making more of them um they are making them more efficiently too like i hear there have been some die changes um there, there have been some revisions maybe next year i think the rumor is we'll see a ps5 slim which maybe more people will be able to get a hold of mm. but yeah mm-hmm. i think we got to move on to some news folks i know we all want to yeah talk i really want to quickly say mm-hmm. also lucky dog podcast is like, as a new homeowner try not to buy too much clutter plus you're i hear you now. I yeah feel yes i hear you exactly. <laughs> ah, all yeah. three of us. Oh my, yeah. god. <laughs> oh my god. Um and then shout out dude named Charlie who went back to Galaxy on T Mobile. Adios iPhone. Good for mm-hmm. you. All right. Mm-hmm. Thanks, Valentina, for your time. No Thank problem. You. Thanks for having me, guys. This was fun. Yeah, always. All right. Bye. Later. Bye. All right. Let's hustle. Yeah, like I was going to ask folks. people to tell us what's mm-hmm. on their wish list, but people have already been doing that in the chat. <laughs> They're like, this is yeah, people are like, yes, please volunteering tell us what you're everything. Yeah, please. Yeah. We will have some Q and A time after the rest of the episode. We've got a bunch yep. of news to go through. Yeah, Barktel just mentioned the products. Steam Deck. Did you say that there was no wait for the Steam Deck anymore? No, they're just selling it now. They're Woo! just it's out there. But also, I wish I had more time to play my Steam Deck because I got one and I'm like, never, <laughs> never have time. I have time for Vampire Survivors. That's it. Occasionally, uh, okay. <clears throat> Let's move on to news. Sit with us. Hang with us, folks. Okay. Let's move on to some other news. Um, There's been a big, big rocket launch. Finally, NASA's Artemis 1, the rocket that will basically help NASA test um, their new rocket system, the SLS system um, for a future manned moon mission. Um, This is not a manned moon mission, but this is going to be currently, um, I believe it's in an elliptical orbit around Earth. Eventually, it's going to head to the moon. It's going to collect a lot of data that's going to help uh, all of NASA's future missions, especially the Artemis 2, which is going to be the manned moon mission. Uh, do you have feelings about this, Shalyn? Like this, this has been I mean, delayed space for a is while. Cool. That's my only thoughts. Wow. <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, yes, a lot of this stuff takes time. A lot of this yeah. stuff always has delays because why well, they launch test flights mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. they rejigger stuff and they go back out again. And like it's, yeah, of course there's a delay. I get it, but mm-hmm. I mean, this is this is finally it happened. I'm, I don't pay attention to space news. You don't though. pay More attention like... to space. I wish I wish Shirlin did pay attention to space because space why? is cool. Everybody, I think we've... so too. <laughs> But I don't want to like keep looking at the outside. You don't want to keep looking up and outside. Um, we've got a good piece from Marielle Moon and Gadget um, that that kind of puts this in context to you. NASA's successful Artemis One rocket launch brings humanity closer to a lunar landing. So I'd suggest go check that out, get some context, and uh, this is something we've been waiting for for a while. It's very exciting for NASA to be, you know, launching their um, space launch system. That's what SLS stands for. It's their most powerful rocket yet. Who knows what this could all lead to? I feel like, especially when it comes to moon missions, we've just basically been in a standstill for decades. So it's nice to see some sort of movement. I don't know what's going to happen beyond this. Um, Speaking of of space stuff, uh, you care about space, Sherlin, because you care about Apple satellite texting feature, right? The (laughs) SOS satellites. Yeah, so that's the thing about space I care about. Now, this week, or actually last week on Friday, I took a demo with Apple um, to mm-hmm. see the emergency satellite via... Did they S- drop you in the middle of nowhere? It's just so like emergency here, text, Emergency SOS via satellite. And yes, no, we actually tested it in Prospect Park, but not that mm-hmm. like we were you know, suddenly out of service because we're in Manhattan or, or we're in New York. There's no way. But, um, you know, we use special demo phones on which mm-hmm. the company had disabled like cellular and stuff. And we tested like I actually chatted like I came up with a scenario and this is what you won't see in my articles. Right. Uh, the real behind the scenes stuff. <laughs> I, uh, you know, you go through this, the uh, the actual um, emergency SOS like interface, you have to answer a survey. And so they're like, okay, what's going on? What's your trouble? What's your emergency? Right? Like 911, what's your emergency? 
And this one, they offer you multiple choice questions. So I was like, okay, I'll pick the one that it looks like nobody would pick. So I picked the one where it's like a crime or whatever is going on. And then mm -hmm. they're like, okay, what's the situation? And then of all the choices there were, I picked active shooting or something. And then they're like, how many people are in danger? Or like, describe your location. I was like, we're in a forest. And so basically I came up with this like, really weird scenario where like three people were being hunted by like a crazy person with a rifle or something. I don't know. I think I've been watching too much Criminal Minds, but basically um the news though is that now this week apple launched a new demo mode for everyone on an iphone 14 you can go into settings emergency sos and then check out a demo of the um, emergency text via satellite feature now instead of communicating with a real agent at a relay center or emergency response uh, center you'll be um given like canned responses through a server um mm -hmm. and apple will route the demo mode uh, text to somewhere else and but but the idea is that like it's like a fire drill right like instead mm -hmm. of like in case you're ever somewhere in the wilderness you're lost and you want to get in touch with uh, like emergency services via satellite you need to know what the experience is going to be like so you're not like i mean you don't want to be seasoned at it but you also don't want to be like tripping over yourself not knowing what to do because there are a lot of things that might be confusing for example the very right. first step to right. even access this feature is call 911 and and if you're lost in the woods, you're like, ah, I want to use emergency, whatever text now you might, your first instinct might be to go to text. Your first instinct might be to go to the emergency app, but there's no such thing. You have to try to dial 911. First. That's weird. And that is a weird is. usable thing. Yeah. I, I agree. It's like, it, maybe there should be a more direct way to find mm -hmm, this feature, mm -hmm. but I, I, I think Apple wants people to think that your first step is always to dial 911, That's at least true. in the US. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Right. So they want you to go to 911 first, and only when that fails, you they will show you the option to. How did they demo this for you? Do they disable 911 on some of these phones? Like So we were being routed to a relay center that okay. knew, that knew to expect our messages okay. at this time. Wow, that is a hard demo to set up. Apple it is. has to deal it with is. this Apple has center. the power, yeah. right, to flex that they I think they had their own relay center set up as well mm -hmm. and in some places uh that where maybe they know there's mm -hmm. not like a close us uh, like for example, you also need to be able to like be in within reach of a emergency like response system that right. accepts text messages. Mm -hmm. That's the key too cuz these are text messages. So the other thing you also get used to by testing out demo mode is not only like um how long it takes to send a text message over a satellite, but also how to position your phone point your phone to, mm -hmm. to find and connect to a passing satellite overhead and you're you actually connecting to real satellites with this demo so you don't want to do it too much because you're going to overload the system but mm -hmm. it will show you how long text takes to send and also kind of train you as to how to be concise and not to use too many words um, while you're texting so i thought that was pretty interesting um and yeah prospect park's not where i expect to need help but there you go i mean i've gotten lost in prospect park many many times but yeah you probably don't need satellite Same. help to get out there it's more like yeah. which which exit am i getting out at uh, which right. you know what's the closest subway i don't know that's really yeah. cool i'm glad you got to test yeah. that Sherlyn. so what was that um like what were the delays when you were doing texting like how long did it take for message to send and stuff yeah, you, 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 it's funny because you would send like a message and mm -hmm. um, as it's sending, like, like, you know, you imagine like a progress bar, right? right so imagine right. as it's sending, you will lose the satellite connection because the satellite is traveling overhead mm -hmm. really quickly. So you might mm -hmm. lose it. So you, then you need to turn around again and find another satellite. Mm -hmm. So if you're in that situation, it can take a few minutes to even Oh, wow, because you like, have to keep holding it up to... Exactly, wow. to mm -hmm. maintain that connection. And then things like dense foliage can get in the way, things mm -hmm. like buildings. So this isn't something you want to test in the middle of a city. And also if you're in the middle of a city, you're not you going to need, it. need yeah. Yeah, yeah. satellite help. Yeah, that's cool. So, this is yeah it was it was it does take a while to send mm -hmm. and this is yeah. also different than the thing t-mobile announced because they made a big deal with their sort of satellite thing because i believe yeah. theirs goes through the cell towers to connect the satellites mm -hmm. rather than the phone directly pinging a satellite so that's a, it's a whole thing we are really in mm -hmm. interesting new territory here for our phones but i think it's Absolutely. it's good to have connectivity because i feel like especially out here in georgia like when i'm driving on a country road and i lose all connectivity i'm like yep. ha huh, this yep. feels weird in 2022 yeah. to be to be stuck nowhere and then i think about blair witch and i think about uh, <laughs> i don't know everything else uh every horror movie and things that have happened in georgia so you know good features to have i'm glad we're doing this um also in mobile news Sherlyn, i knew you were you were so excited you couldn't stop oh, yeah. being oh, yeah. oh, excited yeah. and clapping for yeah. snapdragon's qualcomm yeah. snapdragon 8 gen 2 chip right yeah. Yeah, so so excited, <laughs> so y'all. So hype, so excited. Hardware um, accelerated ray tracing in your phone. Yes. Wow. Yes. 
That's I cool. mean, I think that's really cool. Honestly, don't get uh-huh. me wrong. I think that that particular will little never fact be actually cool. be used. But yes, cool. Who knows what's gonna? Mm-hmm. Here's the thing. Qualcomm, I think, has every right to be nervous right now mm-hmm. that it's going to lose market share, that it's going to lose relevance because every company is making their own damn chip. Yeah. Like you've got Google's Tensor, Apple's A series, Bionics, you've got Microsoft on, let's say, Surface tablets. Yes, Microsoft's teaming up with Qualcomm on mm-hmm, it, but mm-hmm. I don't know. I feel like it's a matter of time. They're, they're definitely like, pra- they're looking at what everyone else is doing. Like, mm, yeah. Doesn't seem that yeah, hard. Sell me. Uh-huh. Right. Samsung has Exynos and Exynos is trying to close the Delta on the Snapdragon. So like you've right. got every company is really trying to make their own uh, chips, SOCs. So with Qualcomm's announcement this week of the new Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, it used to be we would pay a lot of attention because these are the ones that power all the phones, right? Yep. <laughs> LG, yep. HTC, OnePlus. And right now, honestly, it feels like the only phones of note that the Snapdragon series powers are sure the Samsung flagships, they're, mm-hmm. they're still using them, um, OnePlus phones. But then you think about everything else that used to use a, a Snapdragon chip, they're all gone now. Like LG's yeah. gone, HTC's gone, Google uses his own Tensor. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's there's not a lot. There, there. I mean, because the variants of those chips are ending up in VR headsets and things like that. So I forget what is powering the, the, HT, the MetaQuest Pro. So they have but like specific like that. Yeah. chips for VR yeah. too. They have their XR platform, they have the Snapdragon, mm-hmm. you know, uh, so th- when it comes to the mobile premium line, the Snapdragon 8 series, that's been, always been like for the most powerful flagship phones. And mm-hmm. now it's like, all right, we'll see. But in case you care, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 uh, will enable support for things like uh, 5G SIMs, Wi-Fi 7, and 200 megapixel cameras. And mm-hmm. this is what makes me feel like Qualcomm is kind of losing, running out of ideas. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know, th- I mean, obviously there's like AI stuff in there too, but... Yeah, better picture quite- stuff. Yeah, yeah. Right. It's, it's, I don't, I don't know. Maybe they, because they still have to work with manufacturers to enable some of these features. That's where the trip is. That's where the, mm-hmm. the break in, in, you know, being able to enable a certain type of technology versus users actually being able to test this out. That's Qualcomm's challenge. And then until they pivot to becoming a phone maker themselves, mm. which it seems more knows? likely a company will be like, huh. Nice, yeah. uh, nice chips you got there, Qualcomm. Uh, it's a shame this market is kind of falling apart. Let's just help you out there. Qualcomm's market cap is $136 billion. And mm. let's just say some companies have a lot of money. Have a lot of yeah. money. So I don't know. Um, mm-hmm. And in the chat, Mark Dell said, will, will Sherlyn get ray tracing on her solitaire game? I mean, you know what? Ray tracing mm. on solitaire is dope. I, I will look forward <laughs> to it. Um, and then also... Um, right, CF542 rightly points out how useful is ray tracing on a six inch screen. Not, not I mean, so you can make some scenes look really good, but yeah, mm-hmm. that is that is going to kill a battery that's going to do all sorts of stuff. I'd imagine, like, I, I'm surprised more films aren't doing like straight up, um, really heavy duty, um, AI stuff on video con- on video chats, you know, like mm-hmm. when you're actually chatting with people. Um, I know there's a lot of work behind Google. the scenes on Google yeah. phones, you know, and, and even the iPhone, yeah. but. There seems like so much more, especially when like you look at the the AR filters on like Snapchat and TikTok too. It's like there there is some of that in iMessage, but not quite. It feels like there is a gap where we're trying to reach. So anyway, new yeah. Qualcomm chips. These are going to be new high powered things. Ray tracing in phone apps and phone games. Nobody cares. Yeah. Nobody cares. Um, we've got another story here that's kind of interesting. The island nation, the Pacific island nation of Tuvalu, which is between mm. Australia and Hawaii. It only houses like 12,000 people, but it's mostly well known for owning the .tv domain. So <laughs> Tuvalu makes money every time you see a .tv domain. Nice. Um, they announced that they are turning to the metaverse to preserve their culture. So I'm reading here a statement from Simon oh. Kofe, or Kof, um, the country's foreign minister. He says, as our land disappears, we have no choice but to become the world's first digital nation. Our land, our ocean, our culture are the most precious assets of our people. And to keep them safe from harm, no matter what happens in the physical world, we'll move them to the cloud. End quote. Mm-hmm. And this is just a really, I think Tuvalu is known for like making big statements to you. I think it was either him or somebody else, um, you know, did a press conference while standing knee deep in water too, to kind of represent what is going to happen to this country. Uh, we expect uh, Tuval to be completely underwater by the end of the 21st century Jeez, at yeah. the current rate. So unless unless we do something and as certain certain rates of climate change are already locked in, like we can't stop, I believe, 1.5 Celsius from uh, from pre-industrial eras to uh, 
to kind of hit like we we are definitely barreling towards a messy and dangerous climate future it's going to affect a lot of countries and some will just not exist anymore like tuvalu yeah. i don't know if you have any thoughts about this Sherlyn, but it's a really interesting story that puts a lot of this in perspective i think i think there there's something like art like about this mm -hmm. there's something about what they're trying to do that is you know beautiful in itself but it's also deeply depressing um however speaking of the metaver metaverse mm -hmm. meta the company that makes portal displays that you know they nobody remembers the portal displays for. yeah yep also we hate it i mean the whole privacy issue was just always so thorny mm -hmm. um anyway meta said it won't make portal video conference tablets anymore and here's the thing the only reason that we mentioned this is because we always shit on google for the google graveyard <laughs> and getting rid of things i just wanted to make sure we were being fair i mean and calling sure. out when other companies i yeah. do it all the time uh I like know. when amazon does really terrible products we talk about too um i do remember being in one of the first briefings for this because uh facebook mm -hmm. they were still facebook at the time were <laughs> so excited they, they spent years working on like their first actual consumer gadget device and um i remember talking to facebook people being like are you sure you want to be releasing like video mm -hmm. conferencing cameras like um you know people people have some privacy concerns you know like uh about facebook and about you guys and the response from the pr person was like oh yeah really they have privacy concerns? I don't know. And it was very flippant in a way that was like, oh man, you guys are screwed. You are so oh, blind man. to the way people see you. And this was before Mark Zuckerberg basically tanked the company by going after the metaverse. So, you know, sometimes you take briefings that, you know, like are, are dead on arrival products. You know, like, oh, this is, I'm sure a lot of people spent M m many many years working on this but nothing is going to happen here. It, I believe those things actually did sell, sell decently well. They I'm were like I think they did. vaguely yeah. popular and they had some yeah. cool features in terms of the way uh, they focused on the video. Uh, like if you walked around a room, it could follow you and things like that. Google ended up doing a lot of that in their exactly you know, in their things. Yeah, I'm telling stage. you between mm -hmm. in the heart, in the in the smart home wars, right? Yeah. You look at especially on the non Apple side, you look at like Amazon and Google dominating the market. Meta only had this one device portal and it's not doing that great. It just it really quickly got taken over by Google and Amazon. Mm -hmm. Amazon, don't forget, has the Echo Show tablets too. So I think when it I, comes to smart displays, yeah. um, Google has the lead, but speakers, Amazon, yeah. that's the stronger. I'd, I'd love to have actual numbers to compare <laughs> like the Echo Show versus Google's devices, but also like um, we were really impressed too. What was the one, was it Amazon that had the one with the speaker that was removable or was that Google? That was nope, Google. that's Google, but that's yeah. not an announced yet. This is a Pixel tablet that's coming yeah. out um, yeah. next year. Yeah, with with the speaker like attachment, yep. which is it's kind a of speaker cool. base, and it's mm -hmm. basically a tablet. Yeah, I'm just really surprised Apple's not doing much more because I know a lot of people have old iPads and things like that that they use for all sorts of things. Like stick an iPad mm -hmm. on like a nice HomePod base or something. There are some things that Apple HomePod doesn't right. do that's very. Um, very confusing to me. I don't know. Yeah. Um, okay, let's move on from this uh, RIP portal video conferencing tablets. We will never talk about yep. you again. I want to yep. do a quick update on FTX, the cryptocurrency exchange that has basically imploded since we last talked about them. Uh, they have filed for bankruptcy. The CEO and founder, Sam Bankman Fried, has left the country, just escaped. Like w this whole thing following this has been kind of like a very dramatic thing. I believe he is, he traveled back to the Bahamas where the company is technically based. Um, they're, they're like regulators are just like having a field day, like diving into this mess. Like this, um, the bankruptcy of this company could affect over a million investors, a lot of money, tens of billions of dollars um, just evaporated into thin air um yeah guys there are a whole bunch of interviews out there with sam bankman freed if you want to if you just want to like be very frustrated at um at somebody who the tech industry heralded as this sort of like young genius of the crypto market he's gonna he's gonna make everything very official it's gonna make this all very clear he's had um you know big forbes covers and things like that and it's so very much the elizabeth Holmes situation because if you read these interviews which are infuriating um there are some I believe on Vice, Vox also had one where somebody was DMing him. Uh, there's a New York Times one too that people really don't like because they don't, they didn't really push back on Sam Beckman Fried very much. But you get the sense that he is a young guy who used to talk up this idea of uh, what was it, effective altruism, and mm. 
it turns out a lot of that is just bullshit. And he was just like, I just wanted to make money and wanted to try to steal money. And it's all very, very, very sickening. Just very, very gross. He is going to be the subject of a new book by Michael Lewis, the author of The Big Short. So, you know, he, and apparently Michael Lewis was embedded with him for the past six months. So, holy hell, that guy is just like once again in a place to tell um, a really compelling financial story that I think a lot of people uh we'll we'll want to hear more about i also saw this statement um which i think is pretty hilarious so uh so ftx now has a new ceo john ray the third who also oversaw the enron bankruptcy so as enron fell apart this guy was also like there to basically he wasn't like responsible for it but he was there to like pick up the pieces basically um he has an amazing quote that was um seen in filings, AP reported on it. He says, never in my career have I seen such a complete failure of corporate controls and such a complete absence of a trustworthy financial information as occurred here. From compromised systems integrity and faulty regulatory oversight abroad to the concentration of control in the hands of a very small group of inexperienced, unsophisticated, and potentially compromised individuals, this situation is unprecedented. So yeah, folks, like, um, this is pretty crazy. You're going to be hearing about this for quite a while. Sherlyn, any any thoughts on the FTX disaster? I don't know if you ever went into crypto or put any money into crypto. Crypto sucks. That's all I can tell uh -huh. you. I mean, I think one of the funds that I have like a like in my retirement savings or something mm -hmm. does invest in Bitcoin or whatever, like one of the more established cryptocurrencies or Ethereum or Bitcoin, I forget which mm -hmm. one. But yeah, I just think it's such a craze and it's d designed not designed on purpose, but like it's there to fuel the finance bro mm -hmm. type of like to the yeah. moon sort of like uh, yeah like, unfueled uh, speculation just like un unending it's, speculation it's basically wild. Yeah. and it's the yeah. people who are involved in or like really get caught up in this are to me I don't know too, I don't yeah. want to say I don't wanna bash people too much but people who are very interested in this sort of stuff <laughs> are not my type of people it's it's an immediate red flag for me so yeah, exactly. like the the people who are changing mm -hmm. their Twitter names to dot eth to dot f I'm like oh. I don't need to follow you anymore. I just don't need to listen to anything you have to say. So anyway, I folks, barely even wanted to talk about this on our show. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, so it's worth talking about because it's a major tech thing that has imploded. But also, yes. uh, this is why we don't talk about crypto very much. Uh, we have brought on some great people to talk about the whole idea and MFTs yep. and whatnot. But a lot of crypto, especially these major companies that were so heralded by business reporting and business reporters who I think should really be taking a close look at like the stuff they're writing about these days. Um, a lot of it is just a smoke it's, screen and an outright grift. It's less, yeah. and I want to point out, it's less about the technology. I think there, again, like I've said mm -hmm. repeatedly on this show, that I think that there is value to blockchain technology, but I don't think that mm -hmm. anyone involved in turning mm -hmm. it into cryptocurrency or NFTs and whatever is the right type of person to run something like that because the people who get into it are often these people who are just so, yeah. they have like a high-minded approach to things that are for not sure, grounded sure. in reality. Or for right sure. Account. Or like there are some people who did make a ton of money on crypto. Like there are a and lot of people bounced. who invested a couple thousand and became millionaires and ended up becoming those people who are like, oh yeah, clearly this made me millions. This could make you millions. Some of this stuff does work for a very small group of people. Um, but yes. It's, it's not. And they're either very cunning or very lucky, in my opinion. It's anyway. mostly. I don't want to like paint lucky. everyone with yeah. the same brush, but yeah. Anyway. Yep. That, that is the whole thing. So anyway, we will be following the story as much as we can because it's just, it's pretty wild. Uh, but stay safe out there, folks. Like if it, it, it is like the, the age old investment advice, if something sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Now let's talk about a bad investment. Let's talk about Elon Musk's acquisition of Twitter once again. Let's just quickly update here. Uh, there's apparently a lot of backend things that Elon Musk is turning off as he's trying to save money on on server costs. So there, there are some like elements of two-factor authentication that I believe have been turned off. Uh, if you are in Twitter, if you logged in and you don't and you have two-factor and and you want to keep tweeting, maybe don't log out for a little bit. Um, eighty percent of Twitter's contractors were let go with no notice. Um, there are stories about the kind of more brutal rules Elon is implementing with his people to basically say like, "Hey, if you, if you don't want to be an extreme worker, if you don't want to give us your all, you know, get, you're out of here." Um, it yeah, this is, this is the whole thing. It's a continual mess. Um, meanwhile, I did see. I remember a tweet a couple of days ago where Elon was like, "You know, engagement is higher than ever, folks. So screw you all." Clearly, Twitter is doing great, and everybody was like, "Have you ever driven by a car accident?" 
and you just kind of want to slow down and like just take a peek like what ha- what a disaster it may be um that is why engagement is up because we're all making fun of him and it's just kind of funny to see so yeah we're not going to talk much more about this but it is nice to have the occasional update uh Sherlyn, you want to talk about amazon clinic a virtual healthcare yes. service that they launched recently too Yes. So I don't know if people remember, but I still am interested in telehealth and uh, health services over the Internet. And so Amazon, when it re- released or when it launched Amazon Pharmacy a while ago, I, I mean, I think a lot of us saw that that was coming. A lot of us that have been paying attention to the telehealth industry knew it was coming. But this week, the company launched Amazon Clinic, and that's different. Um, altogether, but it is still squarely within telehealth. It is a virtual health service that lets you talk to doctors or medical professionals over text messaging, That's which cool. is mm-hmm. kind of strange. Like, I, I don't know if it, like, I don't know how I feel about it just yet. Yeah. Um, so basically what this is, is you can consult healthcare professionals for some common conditions. It's mm-hmm. not for everything. It's not meant to replace a full doctor, um, but you can, you know, get advice, um, and even prescriptions without making a video call, without even seeing a professional face to face. Okay, okay. I know it seems dodgy, but it connects you with third party virtual care options. You can choose uh, from Amazon's partner providers, but the purpose has to be one of the following. It has to be acne, hair loss, Mm -hmm. acid reflux, pink eye, sinusitis, and UTI. Oh, that's not surprising. It's, yeah, these are all very like common, yeah. easily treatable, you and know, and not there are a bunch of startups right now. There's things like Keeps and other companies that do right. similar things Keeps like for I, hair loss. Yeah. 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 Um, UTI is something where like, you know, you just need the medicine and you don't mm-hmm, want to like mm-hmm. deal too much with it because some people will have some shame attached yeah, to yeah, that yeah. and maybe, and that's why maybe the text-based uh, platform makes a bit of sense. Um, hair loss is another one of those. Acid reflux is again, one of those things you just go buy like some, tum- I don't know, is it Tums? I don't but know. But you can get like for. super, super Tums, like for people who are right, really- Right, you can get the better yeah. one mm-hmm. if you're severe enough. So yeah. um, as and it's much- cool, you can renew some prescriptions too. Like if you have asthma, high blood pressure, or migraine, so that's- that's that's useful i'd say yeah Yeah. so for me as much as i am dubious on the whole Mm -hmm. like text messaging thing i also i I think it's unclear yet to me whether the text messaging service is you know a bot based system where like it's actually generic like template based Mm -hmm. responses or if you're talking and texting with a real professional that's that's a good question that Um, would make a Right. It would make a big I know for keeps and other services, I use keeps occasionally for a couple of mm-hmm. things too, because I was like, I saw my hairline one day. I was like, mm, that's not good. I gotta, mm-hmm. I gotta do something about that because, uh, yeah, I, I am getting older. We're all getting older folks. Uh, no. It will happen to you too. Um, but I sent keeps some photos and eventually a doctor was like, yeah, cool. yeah, looks like, looks like a certain amount of, you know, uh, male pattern baldness happening there in the front. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I got some pills because of that. And that was a pretty simple and easy process. So I could see a service like this basically through text to make it super easy. The whole reason this would, exists is because our healthcare yeah. system sucks. Like yes, it's just well, awful. So here's the thing. Yeah. Another thing that um, I learned from speaking with a lot of healthcare professionals when I was covering mm-hmm. telehealth is that the other thing that doctors and like primary care physicians all want to do is to encourage this system of your doctor is not there in case of emergency. Your doctor really is someone that is, you should consider as part of your holistic approach to your health. So Mm -hmm. not someone that, think of your body as more as something that you wanna check up and maintain all the time instead of only going to seek help for when it breaks, right? For sure, So they wanna open this door to like a friendly two-way communication uh, that you're not actually scared of seeing your doctor and and instead you think of your your primary care person as your friend or your, you know, someone Mm -hmm. that's like constantly there. Well, that's, that's how it used to be, back in the day when people were living in small communities and you had the like town doctor right and, like everybody knew them right and they you so saw for them. me i yeah. have doctors in my family for mm-hmm. whom like any small little thing i just go straight to them I'm like oh my god this is probably yeah, like, yeah, you know yeah. it's like it's you want to mm-hmm. have the ability mm-hmm. to not feel afraid about speaking up about symptoms you want to yeah. not minimize symptoms so i want to clarify also the thing that we said just now i'm not sure whether that you know you're ta- connected to a real person or not um it does sound like you will be connected to a actual healthcare professional you have to be for a, prescriptions yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. So through a secure messaging portal, you will mm -hmm. first answer a short questionnaire after you pick your preferred provider. Mm -hmm. Then you'll be connected via the secure messaging so portal. So bot questions and a real person. Yeah. Right. And then mm -hmm. a personalized treatment plan. And and this part though, it's not covered by insurance. So not yet anyway, right? Mm -hmm. So you will still have to play that pay that flat fee up front, depending mm -hmm. on the condition you pick. So acne would be a different price from hair loss, etc. And you will also remain connected to your healthcare professional for up to two weeks after the first chat so that you can send like follow up messages. So for example, if the medication isn't really working out for you or like you're not sure of how you should use it with food or, or you know, certain times of day, mm -hmm. uh, you will have the option of going back and asking more That's questions, useful. which I think is how it should be, right? Like it mm -hmm. should be an ongoing conversation as opposed to a one time visit and you're done. I do, I do want to say there are certainly like I, I'm worried about Amazon getting more deeper into healthcare. We talked about yeah, the Amazon are. pharmacy yeah. feature where you're going to be able to like eventually get prescriptions uh, directly through Amazon, I believe. Um, this sucks that we have to rely on like a major company, especially one that is so yep. like notoriously awful as Amazon to get some yep. basic better healthcare features because yep. in America it's impossible to see your doctor immediately. If you're mm -hmm. for people outside of the country, like let, let me just tell you, I, I tried to book an appointment with my primary care physician recently. They're like, how is uh, January? How's January 2023? Like, I'm sick now, buddy. So if you're sick now, okay, what do you do? You emergency, go to an emergency, not even emergency clinic. There's urgent care centers. So I'm all sorry, of a sudden, this new, meant, yeah, yeah, this new trend of urgent care centers has popped up, which are yep. all over the country. They're everywhere. In New York, and, they're called City MD. City uh, MD. So there's a whatever, chain called City MD. Trying to make them seem more official, but you, you basically, it's a thing you could walk into and get. <gasps> Healthcare. Immediate. Yeah. Immediate healthcare. Amazing. Yeah. But then they're always the weirdest sort of like corporate run things that they feel like it never feels like they actually care about you. It feels like you're going also, into yeah. the doctor's suck. It's like you're going yeah. into Starbucks and they're just like yeah. disgruntled. Like instead of ordering a latte, you're getting like, I think I have the flu. Yeah. Can you give me some medicine or something? They just want um, you in and out. They don't care really that much. It's about not. It, really. So yeah, we, we've got huge sweeping problems in healthcare in yes. this country. So if you're watching this from outside the country, if you're in Canada or anywhere, um, you know, with, with great socialized medicine, medicine, this is a horror story. I, I, I agree. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, Amazon Clinic is only available in 32 states at the moment. Amazon mm -hmm. Pharmacy is partially covered by insurance, depending on where you are yep. and depending on your you know coverage plan. Um, so if you do get medication through Amazon Clinic, it can be covered. The medication itself can be covered through Amazon Pharmacy um, if your insurance supports it. And that's the way like that's the way I got to talk about American healthcare, right? Like in your insurance covers, if your insurance <sighs> provider covers it, yeah. that sort of thing. And Let's talk about something different. more more fun and sure. uh, I, I think it's annoying. I don't know. Uh, Nike wants to join the blockchain. I heard you were excited, Sherlyn, about Nike's blockchain product. <laughs> you were so excited. Think... As excited as you were for the Snapdrag. I, I'm pretty excited, actually. Yeah. I don't think we should mm -hmm. talk about the, the... So what happens is mm -hmm. Nike launched a platform, community type thing called Dot .swoosh. Um, and it's not so much like... It's the the way the company sort of marketed it is, is this is their Web three approach. Right, but in its right. own press release, it also says blockchain powered technology or quote what many call Web three. Um, <laughs> Yeah, but the goal is for them to uh, so-called offer an inclusive, equitable place for athletes, creators, collectors, and consumers to design and own the future of sport. It's very, I think, nebulous what this mm -hmm. means. It sounds kind of like they're basically you can sign up with if you have an invite, you can go sign up and you know claim your name. Like for me, it would be like Sherlyn mm -hmm. or what, something. But what what is it for? That is my right. Question. And so, so, and so, initially, when they properly launch, I think they'll have drops of like virtual product, <laughs> and starting in January, so it'll be like virtual shoes or virtual like gear, um, and then they'll they'll have like sp specific athletes they team up with to launch some of these collections as well, and then ultimately maybe because it's all very experimental right mm -hmm. now, maybe they will also go the route of letting you create stuff that you can sell to other people through their um, platform. That's never, that's never gonna so happen. so it is. Yeah. It, we don't know if that going to happen mm -hmm. because that would require a lot of systems in place that would require mm -hmm. a, first mm -hmm. of all a payment processing system that goes two ways another is the like our what are we turning this into geo cities right now yeah I, I feel like nike, the whole point of nike nike like they're talking about this as being an inclusive platform um mm -hmm. the whole point of this entire company is built on exclusivity like the fact that you can you got to pay a lot of money to get this one shoe 
and uh, you gotta wait in line for it, or you gotta get the drop on on an app. And I'm like, oh, you're just so yeah. This is a new I, place to get virtual right. shoes and virtual so jerseys. Yeah. Okay. I think that sneaker culture in general. I don't think that that's just a problem of Nike. I think the whole idea of absolutely. But they they have benefited more than any other company oh, for sure. from that. Yeah. I will say that like in at least in the press release or in the briefing that I got that like Nike's so-called approach to inclusivity in this is to like reach out to under like represented communities first. When and, like rolling yeah. these things out we want like, you to pay 200 dollars for sneakers first to me to I mean, yeah. yes but yes. to me the whole thing of like that but to me that like the idea of going first to like people who are not necessarily in your target demographic general like it's not something i've seen done before and that's why it's I'm absolutely like, oh, their target demographic cool. though like I, I don't know yeah anyone with money i guess yeah any yeah. well anyone with money but also um communities that have historically like really supported nike too like so yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, Springles in the chat says, I would like to see what Nike does with blockchain. That could be interesting. I mean, I think the idea of blockchain is really there to serve as like a yeah. verification tool for the good. You know what? I'm going to say something controversial because oh, we've been boy. talking about blockchain and NFTs I and crypto like for, NFTs. for years. Um, I'm tired of making excuses for blockchain. If the technology know, is so good, freaking use it for something yeah. good it instead of destroying the planet. Right yeah. yeah, exactly. Uh, if uh, a lot of people are talking about blockchain things where it's like, oh, this is a decentralized, you know, ledger of everything. I'm like, you mean like we could just have a database, just have nothing wrong with the database. It, they've worked yeah. for years. We, we, we have built entire, yeah. you know, businesses on databases uh, anyway. Anyway, um, this is me ranting against blockchain and NFTs. Yeah. Uh, once again, Let's talk about other stuff that's more as other that. stuff. Well, OK, so there's other things. Let's move on to around in gadget. We've got some big stories going on or actually one we really want to talk about. Mm -hmm. James True, uh, the guy who loves action cameras GoPros. and he loves yes. GoPro specifically. He reviewed the GoPro. Uh, I don't know if this is a review. It's not a review. This it's is a hands -on, piece. Yeah. yeah, it's a hands on of the GoPro Hero. A black, Hero 11 Black Mini. I hate the way GoPro names things. Um, it is a smaller version of the 11 Black, I believe. So it's yeah. a small camera. It's a small yeah. action camera. Um, James wrote this the up. It looks black really cool. Great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the eleven black. I had a chance to use it during our um, uh, review of the Apple Watch Ultra. That's all we mm -hmm. took with us to shoot that video in, on the trail, and that was really awesome. Uh, the the eleven black mini is like yeah, a smaller uh, version that probably doesn't have all the bells and whistles, but there's mm -hmm. no touch screen, for example, so you can navigate with the uh, small display on the top. But if you're familiar with GoPro, you already know how to use that. Um, sure. It's right back to Hero 4. Um, yeah, I mean, the pictures that we got from this Hero 11 uh, Black Mini that uh, James posted on the hands-on, the mini review, I guess. They're mm -hmm. calling it a review. Um, they look good. I mean, yeah. they, I, that landscape picture of a soccer field looks amazing. So yeah, check it out. Check it out. Check it out. I mean, I, also for the people who wear uh, GoPros on their heads with mm -hmm. like the head straps, like something like this is actually probably going to be better for you than something with the screen. Seems pretty yeah. cool. I wish um, I bought a GoPro Hero 10 Black, I think mm -hmm. last year or the year before. I'm like, I'm going to we're going to do walks I'm gonna go oh, through the yes. forest. I'm going to use it for product reviews or whatnot. Have not have not done I know. anything with it. it that's the thing There's nowhere that, to go. It's not just, it's not just yeah. about capturing the footage. And I will say mm -hmm. GoPro makes capturing the footage yes. easy, but it yeah. is actually what you do afterwards with the mm -hmm. footage that takes time and takes effort. Oh, man. I'm so bad at that, too. Um, we do have a bird feeder, so I want to set up a good way to just have it sit nice. there and look at the birdies. So that's my thing. Um, let's move on to what we're working on. I put up a review. I spent all weekend, actually, uh, reviewing NVIDIA's RTX 4080, mm -hmm. the newer, cheaper, uh, slightly cheaper than the 1599 uh, RTX 4090. Um, this one is an 1199 card, um, just as powerful with NVIDIA's new architecture. Uh, I, I think it's pretty great, but also mm. I do think every everybody should just sit tight and wait mm. to see what the next NVIDIA cards are going to be like. The RTX 4070 okay. and 4060, which have not been announced yet, maybe eventually 4050. Um, the new architecture, uh, the uh, Ada Lovelace architecture that NVIDIA is talking about, does a great job with ray tracing. Um, it is certainly mm. faster in every way. This card is priced the same as the 3080 Ti or Titanium that came out earlier this year. I believe, and uh, it's faster. It's like genuinely faster 
I don't think it's an upgrade, but it's certainly like a really, really good video card. I just want more, I want more affordable options out there and we're not really getting that. So, you know, stay tuned. I did review Intel's ARC GPUs a couple, uh, it was a month or two ago, and those are great low end options. And it's nice to see like more things happening in the space. Um, but maybe if, if you can help it, don't, don't go out and buy a $1,200 video card. There's so many other things you could do. I'm also testing out Samsung's Galaxy uh, ARC the giant 55 inch monitor, which I need to write up at some point. This is the super curved computer monitor that can tilt into portrait mode and show like three different windows all at once. I have a lot of feelings about this because I feel mm. like it is more impressive on paper than it is in practice, but it is a really wild thing to have sitting next to my desk and to play some games on. It's really, it's really something. What are you working on, Sherlyn? Uh, I have a product coming in to test that I can't really talk about yet, mm. um, but suffice to say it's something people are excited about. Um, and we just had a Apple Watch Series 8 versus Watch Ultra versus SE 2022 uh, video come up, come out. So that's what I was working mm -hmm. on. Um, I'm also still actively testing the Microsoft Adaptive Mouse. Um, the hang up for me here is that I need to figure out which of the 3D printable little attachments I want to print out. I've been using that little, um, the, the, the button to send canned replies to people, right? Like you said, for example, one of the things that you want a macro for is to insert your address, Devendra. And that's such a great, like one that I have added and it's mm -hmm. such a time saver. Mine is, I agree to the embargo, please send the details as well. And that one has been, honestly, I've been using that one so much. So um, that testing is ongoing and, uh, you know, we've got some end of year review, uh, end of year roundups to write. Um, so send me, you know, if y'all have any ideas for the best things in tech this year, the worst things in tech this year, you send them over to podcast at engadget.com because we might, we might forget things. So you let us know. <clears throat> yeah, that's if that's, that's what I've been that's working it. on. I mean, we're all preparing for CES too. So that's a whole thing. And, and Thanksgiving. And Thanksgiving. It's Next more week. like I, I, my life is dictated by like the work ahead of me, basically. So yes, Thanksgiving. Looking forward to that. Yes. And uh, we won't be on next week, folks, and we will remind you all at the end of the show. But yeah, enjoy this episode. And let's move on to our pop culture picks. What you got, Sherlyn? I saw Black Panther Wakanda Forever last Thursday uh, at a Dolby theater in uh, New York, the mm -hmm. one in Lincoln Center. Um, I mean, the, the was, yeah, the nice Dolby yeah, theater the, there. Yeah. The, I think it was an IMAX too. So it was really cool. Um, mm -hmm. I think this, I'm not a big like go to the theaters to watch a movie kind of person. I, I don't mind watching at home as much, but this one was mm -hmm. really nice. Um, I mean, you're also a crazy story, Marvel fan. So yeah, you got to be there for Huge Marvel this. fan. And exactly, I liked Shang-Chi, but I honestly feel, I think I walked out of that theater and I came away thinking this was like, to me, and I know you mm -hmm. have thoughts and objections, mm -hmm. but to me, this was like possibly one of the best like MCU movies since phase, like in phase four, like mm -hmm. in, mm -hmm. since Endgame. Cause I thought, I thought Shang-Chi was good. I think Shang-Chi maybe moved me even more because of like just my whole representation stuff. Yeah. But yeah. what well, kind of forever it's moving in a way it's like it's obviously they had to, i think they dealt with chadwick boseman's death quite respectfully mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um i think the story made a lot of sense i felt some representation in the in the whole namor story the um the water based sort of myth um mm -hmm. speaks to me as a southeast asian living in an island on an island uh, growing up it felt very like a mix of indonesian and like mexican and like that that sort of stuff really mm -hmm. like spoke to me in the story but also the outfits were amazing the soundtrack was great like i think maybe i think it i don't know if it's good or bad that like i'm more into the peripherals of the show than the actual movie mm. i'm not gonna spoil it for anyone obviously yeah i think but, i think that um, that that tells you a lot about the movie to be honest like yeah not sure man i i will see because i i mm -hmm. i like it a lot mm -hmm. uh, i thought it was very cohesive i saw a lot of like call like it felt like it referenced a lot of different things i felt like sure. i was like oh sure. this is this this is that this is this and, and yet the story it was very cohesive i also felt like as a show that doesn't hammer like home like, or it doesn't beat you over the head with the idea that this is like a feminist story. Mm -hmm. It was a very empowering story yeah. for me as a woman. A lot of great strong all, women. Yep. Exactly. It was very strong women, mm -hmm. very powerful women, and, and not only physically, but mentally and emotionally as well. And it's just amazing to watch. You didn't mm -hmm. have to hammer home the point for me to feel that you were telling me this through the story. Uh, I obviously have my issues with some of the actors. <laughs> Letitia Wright. 
uh, yeah, yeah. used to like. Who ended up being a bit of an anti-vaxxer, which is unfortunate because she's also from my home country. So I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay, not great. I really liked her in Black Mirror. I really liked her in a lot of she's things. Great. She's great in everything. It's just like, I do think the pandemic kind of revealed things about people that we don't, Yeah. we can't forget now, unfortunately, but whatever. Uh, I, so I believe she apologized thoughts, for some of that. By the way. Oh, I, I think oh. it's, uh, it, it's kind of complicated. Like I love the first movie. I think it's genuinely great. I think this one mm -hmm. is really complicated because it's trying to do so many things. It's a movie about grief, about the past passing of yeah. Chadwick Boseman and the movie yep. begins with the passing of T'Challa. Um, it's a movie, another movie about like how colonialism has destroyed or basically has shaped a specific culture too. And that it certainly means a lot to me too, because I don't think we talk about uh, Spain's complete, uh, you know, obliteration of native peoples in the Americas, throughout the Americas. Mm -hmm. And this movie is a direct response to that. I think it's very smart in what it's trying to do, but it's not, it wasn't as exciting as the first movie to me. It wasn't as fun because it couldn't be because it's a movie ultimately about grief. Yeah. Um, yeah. I also think the action, like a lot of the action stuff, like the stuff I really yeah. go to an MCU movie for, I'm like, uh, it just feels like they didn't have yeah. as much time. And they I, basically had yeah. to they had to rework this movie because of Chadwick Boseman's death. And that that's the main thing. And you can kind of feel yeah. when a movie wasn't what they intended it to be. You, that was kind of uh, The Rise of Skywalker as well. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I like it. I just feel like a little disappointed. If you want to hear more of my thoughts, check me out on the Filmcast because we just reviewed it there. Yeah, I'll say one word, uh, one thing mm -hmm. about that action thing that you mentioned. Yeah, like where th that's the one thing I also felt was flat, where like with Shang-Chi is like, oh, so many of the action scenes were just amazing. And I was like, yes, the what, what kind of forever. The, the, I don't think this is a spoiler, but there was a car chase scene there. I was like, oh, I wish it was like the first car chase. scene. Like, you know, the first movie had an amazing car chase scene. And then this one just also I'm sick of the car chase scenes. By that point. Yeah. I was like, I'm... It, yeah, it seems like the action <laughs> just didn't really fit anything like i just end. wasn't super excited i do think tana Torta is fantastic and you know the the dude basically had to do the daniel craig thing in casino royale where he had to come out of the water in speedos every for every single scene because I it's a part of his character him in this, yeah. i do feel like a lot of people are like mm, okay i can i can live with that um i, I think he's <laughs> he is fun like he is fun and he is really good intimidating uh, when he needs yeah, to be but also very like empathetic yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, there, there is uh, there are things going around on Twitter about a certain bulge cut that people <laughs> would like to see, um, which apparently very clearly Disney edited in this movie. So, OK, OK, yeah. let's move on to weird. My thing is weird. The yeah. Al Yankovic story, which is um, this is a movie that's on the Roku channel right now. Yeah. And this is a sort of like parody biopic of weird al's life and i love it i think it's a lot of fun nice. i think you should check it out trillin i don't know if it's like yeah. your kind of humor but uh music biopics have been kind of just ruined after the movie walk oh. hard uh the dewey cox movie which just basically like took every single movie biopic trope and just like ripped it apart so <laughs> It's really hard to do a biopic now. Um, I feel like the only successful one was Pop Star, Never Stop, Never Stopping, which was sort of also sort of like a parody biopic. Um, that movie okay. is a work of art. I think this one is not as good. You could tell the budget isn't as high, but you got Daniel Radcliffe as Weird Al. You've got just completely insane scenarios. You've got a whole plot line around like Madonna's like tempestuous relationship with Weird Al, which never happened in real life, but it's really funny. I think it's a, it's a joy and also a really interesting movie for the Roku channel because I don't think people yeah. realize a lot of people don't know what the Roku channel is. And also when yeah. you have to start, when you watch this movie, you have to sit through ads because that is mm -hmm. what the Roku channel is. It is an ad experience. It's free movies and free shows, but you got to watch some ads. And I think this is probably the biggest thing Roku channel has done, even though it's a pretty low budget looking movie. Um, mm -hmm. It has lots of great guest stars. It is just like a ton of fun. I will say like it has a bit of that syndrome. It is based off of an old funnier die trailer, which was also like, what if there was a serious um, Weird Al movie or something? Um, and it's kind of mm -hmm. extending that idea. And maybe, mm -hmm. maybe, just sticks around a little too long maybe they didn't have enough to like feel it really fill almost two hours uh but i think it's a ton of fun you should check it out uh weirdly you cannot watch it weirdly you can't watch it on apple tv because there's no roku app on apple tv yet but if you have roku devices or you could just watch it on your phone or on the web too i believe I roku say, channel yeah. is all over the place and you can check it out it's worth a watch this is weird the al yankovic story all right all right good to go <clears throat> so I have to say two things, which is the feet thing uh, as well, right? The mm -hmm. 
Thanksgiving skip. And I could I could talk about the feed thing. So you could talk about okay. Thanksgiving. Okay, I'll, I'll finish Thanksgiving things. thing, yeah. and then mm -hmm. you can do the feed thing. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's do the whole outro. Mm -hmm. Talk about Thanksgiving, like as part of the outro, and then Dev can come in and talk about the feed. Yep, yep. yep. That was yep. the plan. All right. Well, that's it for this week's episode, everyone. Thank you, as always, for listening. Our theme music is by game composer Dale North. Our outro music is by our very own Terrence O'Brien. This podcast is produced by Ben Elman. You can find Devendra online at... At Devendra on Twitter and talking about movies and TV at the Filmcast at thefilmcast.com. If you want to send me the scenes they cut from uh, Wakanda Forever, uh, I'm at Sherlyn Lowe on You'd Twitter. You'll be retweeting Email them on us. Twitter, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Email us your thoughts at podcast at engadget.com. Leave us a review, please, on iTunes and subscribe on anything that gets podcasts. We won't be having an episode next week, nor will we be live streaming on YouTube next week because of the Thanksgiving holiday here in the U.S. So, yeah, take a break. Listen to an old episode. Oh, thank you very much, Sherlyn. Okay. <clears throat> Another thing, we've heard from some folks that uh, you've been experiencing some weirdness with our uh, RSS feed. Just wanted to you know about some things happening in the background. Uh, we recently moved the podcast over to a new platform, which should be better for our company to take a look at like traffic and analytics and things like that. So that's helpful for us. So we know people are actually listening. But yeah, sorry if um, you've either had uh, fake downloads, like re-downloads of episodes or anything. Also, if you're listening to this and like your feed is just not updating or something, uh, un un unsubscribe and resubscribe that tends to fix things with rss hopefully yeah we won't have any more feed issues like this but yeah just letting you all know there's some weirdness out there thanks for your patience okay we got it cool cool okay uh really quickly d-man is here so hi to d-man hello uh, and then it seems like there were just lots of conversation between chat members Yes, uh, um, Y says wanna... release, release the bold cut. Hashtag yeah. release. The there, bold there is, cut. there is a call to release the bulge cut right now. Yes, because <laughs> this is very, no. it's very obvious there was some editing mm. going on oh, yes. between yeah. some promo I picks. I can tell you, yes, I watched it in IMAX. The vagina. <laughs> <laughs> like, Wait a minute. <laughs> oh my god, I think that was our little like Easter egg mm -hmm. thing for the end. Of the um, why the user with the name Y says uh, shoe emoji? These are my virtual shoes. How about y'all? <laughs> That's pretty funny. <laughs> I paid a thousand dollars for it. It's great. My life is better because of this now. Uh, did you hear about how one of the Paul brothers, maybe it was Logan Paul, I forget which uh, one is more annoying these oh, days, uh -huh. but yeah, they, they uh, bought like an NFT of like Bumblebee the Transformer for literally the price of a house in most areas, like I hate this. A, uh, in the neighborhood of $300,000, yeah. and it is literally worth $10 now. Good. Good. Ugh. Uh, uh, I mean, also, Julio, uh, do you have uh, some content of the week? Yeah, that's right. Tweet mm -hmm. meme of the week, tweet of the week, whatever it is, Julio. Uh, it's not a, it's not a meme, uh, uh, but it's, uh, uh, it's the happy story, I guess. He's setting uh, yeah, it up no, uh, about think, for yeah, a long time. He's, he's yeah. working Before, on it. Just a reminder for viewers of the live stream, we have Julio, oh, our live stream producer, has a segment <laughs> called Tweet or Thing of the Week. So, what is this? I saw a Reddit post from user Julio, Vatican. Can hear you? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, sorry, I was yeah, muted. Um, okay. I saw a Reddit post, Vatican87. Uh, of the new 4080 4, cards that are just sitting in in the micro center shelves as no one's buying them, and wow. and it makes me feel good because the prices are fucking uh, crazy, yeah. and yeah. the whole you know power issue is also uh, you know although it takes less power than the 4090, so that is something right. I mean, they probably won't melt. The 4090s could melt your power supply cables. Ugh. Yeah, so I, I just thought it was it was cool. That's cool. Yeah, it's very cool. This is a great point. It's cool to see uh, I want to acknowledge uh, Vencon Me. Hey, Mij. Mm -hmm. uh, let me know if, how to pronounce your name properly. Mm -hmm. um, it says it's just a reminder to be careful when you talk about indigenous cultures in Latin America that you're still here. Yes. Um, absolutely. Yeah. We should be. I mean, careful. genocide does not mean you don't exist that anymore. It means gone. a right. large amount of Number. people have been were killed um right. there is a great we're not trying john, to minimize yeah, that. yeah yeah there is a great john leguizamo uh, special most recently where he talks about like that and the history of that and everything and mm -hmm. it is it is depressing mm -hmm. it's truly yeah. depressing and hey that's one thing black panther did well is like it tried to it did try to like bring light some, to an 
to yeah. that and also like bring some guilt to colonizers too like france mm -hmm. was like one of the big uh the big bad guys at the beginning at least like that was kind of funny to see especially when they bring in haiti too which mm -hmm. france basically first like, of all can i also say another yeah. mm -hmm. another thing that made me very happy about in black panther was they pronounced Haiti as Haiti. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, thank mm -hmm. you. Because like in Singapore, that's how we pronounce it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, hearing the like black characters on the show call this pronounce it as Haiti, I was like, mm -hmm. yeah, okay. Cause you know why? I've been so brainwashed by Americans that I was mm -hmm. like, Haiti is the correct way to pronounce it, I guess. But then when I it's heard the it way we pronounce it here. Yeah, yeah. It's a different way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was just like, oh, okay. So I can say Haiti and people will know what I'm talking about, hopefully. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, mm -hmm. uh, I also. The movie did to make a big Hi point of that. So that, that was something. Yeah, yeah. A big point of which part? Haiti or? Haiti. Like saying yeah, yeah, yeah. Haiti. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. Um, hi to Jonathan Anderson, who said that uh, they were late. And then, uh, but that hello to the chat. Oh, hi. Mm -hmm. We are lucky, happy to have you whenever. So I have a little update on the Logan Paul NFT. It was not 300000 It was $623,000. That's like a nice house. Most of anywhere in America. Good God. Please give me that money, Logan Paul. Uh, he's not He's not Mr. Beast or whatever whatever his name is. Yeah, I, I hate all this. Even if that guy is giving out money, I'm like, what? what culture have we built that this is the thing that's happening now the yeah. gross thing is that there are like people in like mr beast's comments or mm -hmm. um like other like conspicuous generosity youtubers mm -hmm. who are like clearly in dire straits mm -hmm. they're like please sir can i have some money <laughs> that's really gross it's not just like what culture are we um making mm -hmm. with like people profiting off these videos it's that now it's gotten to be like people are genuinely looking for like saving from mm -hmm. these folks it's 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 nasty uh i think that is pretty much it in terms of questions and things that we wanted to address um but as always we're very grateful that you're here thank you for joining us and taking time out of your day out of your day <laughs> I'm tripping. Remember, no episode next week. We yes. will be back the first week of December, 10, 11, 10.30 a.m. Eastern. Depends. <laughs> Keep an eye on our Twitters, but we will aim for 10. We, we try to yes. aim for 10. We'll see. Yeah. yeah, thanks, folks. Have a happy Thanksgiving. Oh, hang on. I, hope, I think, yeah. yeah, and I think Ben has something to say. Yes. Oh, oh, yeah. Go for it. Well, thanks, everybody, for watching. The stream comes to you via our video team, which is Julio... Barrientos and Luke Brooks, but it's powered by everyone in the chat. Come on, you know this already. You make us smart when we're not otherwise smart. You remember like little facts and make the whole conversation better. Um, and we really like leaned on chat for like some cases for the uh, holiday gift guide. So thank you so much for giving us your ideas with that. If you stuck around this long, you know that we live in a world of algorithms better than the average person. So rate us five stars on iTunes, rate us five stars on Google Podcasts. Tell like three friends about us and that'll help us get some viral lift. We'll see you in two weeks. Thank you.